This week, Governor Ron DeSantis stopped by South Florida for a big announcement. $23 million in total will be given to Miami-Dade to fund Biscayne Bay's restoration and preservation. I had the chance to talk to the county's chief bay officer, Irela Bagué, about the grant and where that money will go. Irela, thank you so much for joining us here on NBC6 Impact. Thank you for having me, Jackie. Well, the governor was in town this week with a big announcement, a huge announcement, funding for Biscayne Bay restoration and preservation grants totaling almost $23 million. This is obviously huge. What does it mean for South Florida and our beautiful Biscayne Bay? Well, it just means, well, first of all, it's a great day for Biscayne Bay. Um, we start with that. And it just means that the state is continuing their commitment and, um, and, and really collaborating with Miami-Dade County on all of the all, all the projects that we really need to implement to reduce that pollution that's entering Biscayne Bay and causing, you know, the seagrass die off, the fish kills that we've been seeing over the past couple of years, and just you know the the the, old, the slow you know decline of of our bay, which is really you know the mainstay of our economy. You were appointed by Mayor Daniela Lavincava, and you are the chief bay officer of Miami Dade County. Can you tell us what does that entail for those that don't know? Well, it's um, it's a position that was a recommendation from the Biscayne Bay Task Force back in 2020. And um, the position basically is an advisor to the mayor and the county commission. And my job is really to interact with state agencies, federal agencies, um, and internally with our local departments working like Miami-Dade Water and Sewer, DERM, our Environmental Resources Management Division, and just really coordinating all of these projects and making sure that we move as fast as possible um, on recovery efforts for the Bay. What are the priorities of your office? Really, the priorities are um, moving policy forward, you know, looking at our code changes, um, implementing a lot of these um, projects and and and. Uh, uh, obtaining more funding from other sources and really making a focus on the the priorities. For example, septic to sewer conversions is a big priority for the county. Um, we've, we've already seen a lot of failing systems and, and th those are contributing factors into the decline of this King Bay. Also our stormwater systems need improvement. We have aging infrastructure. So it's, it's a lot of coordination internally and externally that I do on a daily basis and also you know, help our our general public um, get more educated and more connected on how important Biscayne Bay is to our daily lives. Whether you live on the coast or inland, um, we all have a connection because the water, when we move water through our system, especially during our rainy periods, um, it really moves right into the bay through our canal systems or storm, stormwater systems, and all that carries everything with it. So, you know, we're trying to really educate the public to be part of, of the solution too, right? And, and, and do everything we can. For example, we passed the strongest fertilizer ordinance in the state of Florida. So during May through October, we should not be fertilizing our lawns. That's our rainy season. And so um, all that nutrient pollution ends up through our canals, in our groundwater, and out into Biscayne Bay. So those are just some of the examples that, that I work with. I also work with law enforcement on our marine patrol is, is essential. Um, we've seen a lot of things going on in, in, in Biscayne Bay. We have an incredible amount of increased boater activity and recreation. And of course, we want everyone to enjoy our beautiful resources. But at the same time, they have a role to play too. They have to also protect it and, and keep pollution out of the bay. And so... Uh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I can see that. But you talk about education and you talk about enforcement. So I want to talk about that a little bit because we've been seeing a lot of videos on social media, people out on their boats and throwing trash into the water. Um, how will you be able to enforce what people are doing out there on the water? And what kind of consequences well, will those people face? Well, for example, we've been working very closely with our Miami-Dade Police Department and um, there's different types of, of enforcement. So we have the enforcement on the bay with our Marine Patrol um, enforcing the wake zones right now. It's manatee season. So we really want to get that message out. And it's also education. So when our officers are out there and they stop uh, boaters going too fast through wake zones, they're also educating them as to why. Because, Jackie, we have a lot of folks coming here um, as tourists and enjoying our resources, and they don't 
Some of them have never even seen a manatee in their lives. They don't understand our ecosystem. So, you know, we try to educate and enforce at the same time. At the same time, we have a, a lot of illegal dumping going on all right. over the county. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge problem. And so our, our enforcement, um, and I'm sure we've seen, you know, recently some, um, sadly, some voters were dumping, um, you know, some of our islands out in Biscayne National Park. Well, you know, we had citizens that I call them, you know, our Baywatchers, and um, they were keeping Baywatch. They did record the incident. As a result, uh, we work with our state attorney's office, Catherine Fernandez Rondell, and we we are, you know, filing charges on these um, on these, you know, perpetrators. Irela Vague, thank you so much for joining us once again. Good luck to you, and congratulations once again. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate it.